Let's give it up for the incredible Pastor Dominic and Pastor Amira Russo. Man, we love them. We just love them. For those of you that uh, don't know who I am, I'm Marcus, the other half of Marcus and LaDonna Murray. Uh, my beautiful bride is on the front row here, and I'm so honored to get an opportunity to do life with her, serve with her, raise a family together. It's just, you can show a picture, if you will, Ryan, of uh, my family. Uh, that's us in our foyer. So that's my wife, LaDonna, and our three sons. You see Isaac is there. He's a little bit smaller in that picture, but he's just amazing. We get a chance to hear uh, the sound of the Lord in our house on a daily basis. It is just so incredible. It's like you, you're getting ready for the day and you hear heaven. It's just, it's just such a gift. It's so amazing. So I just thank God for my family. And, um, but I have to tell you a funny story, and I'm not good with jokes don't know how to make real good jokes, and uh, Danielle knows it. She's telling Cade right now, this isn't going to be funny, but Cade, watch him try and make a joke here. Um, so as some of you know, uh, I'm from Detroit. Uh, my wife is from South Africa, so our children are African-American, right? That's so crazy, but anyway. <laughs> But the reason that I have to mention this is because we had to find a dog. And we needed a dog in our house because it's something about a dog. It just kind of makes life a little funner, right? And so uh, my wife being from South Africa, me being from Detroit, I needed a Detroit dog. So if you could show a picture, um, this, is, this is Detroit, right? So this is the dog that I needed. This would have fit right in nicely, I thought. But then I said, well, it would be a little unfair because my wife is from South Africa, so you need what's native to South Africa, which is the, um, the, the bull mastiff. Would you show a picture of that dog? And so, as you see, this was going to be a unique and very interesting experience. Uh, Minister Brittany is sitting there looking at me with Lucius thinking, where is he going to go with this? This is just so crazy. But, you know... Um, God is amazing, and God has a sense of humor. Say sense of humor. This is what we ended up with. <laughs> All right, I did it. So, <laughs> see, Danielle, he pulled one off, right? <laughs> so it's just so incredible. This is Teddy, and he basically runs our entire house. Um, but what's interesting is my oldest son also... Uh, Marcus is his name, and he has, a, um, he has a dog, and it's a chihuahua. And you know, chihuahuas are cute and little. They have a lot of bark in them and a lot of uh, aggression. I don't know why, because they're so tiny. So this weekend, this is why, because you're wondering, where is he going with this, right? So I'm scheduled to speak this morning, but we're babysitting, of all the mornings, we're babysitting Marcus's dog. And the dog's name is Biggie. Biggie Chubbs. So, by virtue of the name, the dog has already got an attitude, right? But God has a way of teaching us lessons, say lessons, through simple things. God, in the Word, the Bible actually says God uses the simple things to confound the wise. So there is, is something about paying attention to simple things that you can actually learn some incredible things. So I'm looking at this dog because it was time to take him out to walk. Now, mind you, I needed to be here at a quarter to eight, but the dog does not want to go outside to walk until 8.30. You can see the problem, right? So the dog literally is growling and showing all his teeth and really trying to let me know who's the boss. So I'm looking at the dog and I'm thinking, okay, I've got to walk this dog what am I supposed to learn here? And then God just showed me, maybe this is what we need. We need to think like a chihuahua. Chihuahuas are weird. This is how they actually think. Would you show this picture? <laughs> Full armor, ready for battle, taking no games, very focused on where they're going, and they will not be deterred from their objective. I think God, the sovereign one, the holy one of Israel, would wish this for us, to think and be focused on where we're going in him. 
So Lord, I just thank you for this extraordinary opportunity to speak before these your great people. Father, I thank you that before the foundation of time, you ordained this particular moment for a select group of people to hear a certain message so that they could shift into another dimension. Father, we thank you for your word. We ask that you touch our hearts, allow them to hear you through me. Let me be minimized. You be glorified, Lord, and let your word reign. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So what's interesting, when you're going to go from point A to point B, you have to shift. In order to go to the next level, I'm starting the timer now. Uh, in order to go to the next level, we have to shift the way that we think. Oftentimes, many of us have been given at some point in the past a glimpse into the future, and we've been allowed to see a little bit of the inkling of the reason that God placed us on the planet, while others in the room um, remember in great detail the assignment that God spoke over your life. While there are still some in the room and online that wonder and say to themselves quietly, okay, Lord, what is it that you actually want from me? That uncertainty oftentimes causes us to sit, sometimes in frustration, sometimes bitterness, oftentimes in criticism and judgment. As we witness others doing something in the kingdom while we sit. I would submit to you, if you're here or watching online, that you were created for such a time as this. Divinely placed, Ken, uniquely positioned, Beth, and you're not here by accident. The most blatant trick of the enemy is to deceive us into believing that we're in the wrong place. We just came from a very powerful week of revival. And the Bible says, when the seed is sown, the enemy comes quickly, say quickly, to try to dig it up. Hard to imagine that after such a powerful week, the enemy would use one of the most basic and common tricks which is to make us feel like we don't belong, like we don't fit, like maybe I'm in the wrong place. The funny thing about life is a lot of times we overthink things. Juan, I'll give you a perfect example. Up north, um, and it, it was just really crazy, we had this tree at our lake house growing, and it seemed to me to be a little too close to the house. And so I'm brilliant. I know you didn't know this, but really, I am... I'm like, there, right? I looked at that tree, I looked at the house, and I said, God didn't put that tree that close to the house because it wasn't there when the house was built. So I had this brilliant idea, and I mean brilliant, say brilliant. I'm going to move the tree. Now, Selena is looking right now, she can already see the problem. I'm not quite a gardener, but I'm gonna move that tree. And I said, I'll bring the tree back here because in our backyard there are woods and I'll put the tree in the woods and there will be plenty of room for it to grow. It was a beautiful, like a green spruce type tree. So I began digging up the tree and that tree, only about this tall, fought me like a pit bull. I'm not kidding you. I worked and worked and worked and worked and you get to a point where you know you probably chose the wrong fight. But it's funny how pride works. I was not going to be defeated. I fought that tree and fought that tree until finally there was nothing left, but they call it a tap root. It's this long root and it's only one and it grows and it goes straight down and over and down. It's, it's just this crazy root. That was the last thing holding the tree in place. And I fought, and I fought. Brian is like, he doesn't know anything about trees. Anyway, I'm fighting with this tree, and I said, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to cut that. And I cut it. And I got the tree on top of the truck. That tree scratched the truck up so bad, it was fighting me even while I was driving the truck. But I got it here, put it in a garbage can, 
called the landscaper, said, hey, there's a tree on the side of my house in a big garbage can. Can you guys go plant that in the back? And he did. There's just one problem. I pulled up the tree and placed it where it didn't belong. You should see that tree now. It's kind of what the enemy desires to do to us because he know you heard the word. He know that God moved, God spoke, God showed you exactly what he wanted to do. And if it wasn't clear, something stirred within us to let us know God's got a plan for me. But the enemy, it's funny how he works, Jerry. He wants you to be replanted somewhere else. Well, his number one trick is to deceive us into minimizing our impact, our purpose, our destiny, and our trajectory in God. He actually has us believing that we're simply a horse and buggy. You know the funny thing about a horse and buggy, it's great for transportation back in the day, but today it doesn't qu quite make sense. On a horse and buggy, and Patrick, you know this, horse and buggy is only going to take you so far, so fast. Typically, a horse and buggy is going to go one to ten miles, sometimes five miles, depending on the speed of the horse. It's going to just go that fast, which imagine that would take you 30 minutes to go five miles. The enemy is so deceptive, he tries to make us believe that we're simply a horse and buggy. When in reality, okay, God made us Lamborghini Diablos. See the difference? We can go at speeds the mind can't fathom because of the weapons of our warfare, but the enemy tells us you're just a horse and buggy, so be happy going 1 to 10 miles per hour. When in reality, God just wants us to do one thing. Say one thing. Shift. Will you go to the next slide and show them the gear? Take a look at that. Put your hand on the gear and do what? Shift. That's all God wants. So, the Bible says, Paul actually said this, setting those things behind me, putting them behind me, those things that do so easily beset me, I press toward the mark of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. We all come here with baggage. Say baggage. You came with some too. It comes from family lines. In certain families, certain things are the norm. Some families, talking about people is the norm. Some families, gossiping is the norm. Some families, arguing and disagreeing is the norm. God is trying to take us from here to there, but he's got to break the stronghold that's holding us back in the middle. So, imagine for one moment, the Bible actually says if any man desire the, off the office of a bishop, he has to live a certain way. That tells us, by inference, that you can desire, say desire, to do more, be more, achieve more, go more places in God. He's willing. The Bible actually says that it's God that will give you the desires of your heart. Think about it. He'll give you the desires of your heart. What does that mean? That means that he will give you, plant it in you, the desire of your heart. And then he will stir that thing and then give you what? the desires of your heart. God is very strategic. I remember coming from Detroit, I was very frugal. Uh, is that the right word, babe? She said cheap. <laughs> you, you're not supposed to say that. <laughs> okay, I was cheap. So when it came time to give, Lucius, the way that it went, they would call for an offering. And please bear with me. If you're already blessed and you got it all together and you're living your dreams and, and you've achieved the, the most and there's no more, you can kind of tune out for a moment. 
But I have to tell you that I was a guy, married a great wife, and yet we were living in a house where the basement was full of water and mold was growing up the walls. So people look at us now, but they don't know about us then. See, God has a way that he will bless you if you shift. God can bless you so remarkably that you will think then was a dream. It is not a get out of jail free pass. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but he delivers them from them all. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. We are not immune just because we're in covenant with God. We still have real life. That's life, birth, death, trials, sorrow, pain, tears, joy. We are still going through the same process. But God has a way, if we are willing and obedient, that will allow us to eat the good of the land. Brian, I was in a position where I needed a breakthrough. And I didn't know how to get a breakthrough. And I was working and working and doing the best that I could. I was battling um, depression. You feel, it's just sometimes feeling hopeless. It was really difficult. But I was cheap too. So every time I got a dollar, Cade, it was my dollar. I worked hard to get this dollar. And guess what, Ken? I wasn't giving anybody that dollar. So I went to a meeting where a minister was preaching. And I had already made up in my mind when I got ready to go. Trey, I said, I'm going to give $20. Why? Because $20 is the right amount of money to give for a midweek service. <laughs> Tell me you haven't thought that. Okay, how, okay, watch this. This is about to be a breakthrough. Tell the truth, shame the devil. How many people agreed with that? Okay? Now God's going to give you a breakthrough. Say breakthrough. Because once you can break past limiting thought, it's it opens the door for the miraculous is all I can say. Does that make sense? Now that does not mean that um, calamity doesn't happen, that weird things don't happen. It, it happens to us too. But God, say but God. So I'm sitting in this service. I purposed in my heart, because it's scriptural, I purposed in my heart what I was going to give, $20, and uh, God moved on my heart. LaDonna wasn't there. And the, the, the pastor or the minister was preaching. And he said, I know some of you are sitting there thinking, what is he trying to get from me? And actually, I was far beyond that because I had already purposed what I was giving. So he wasn't getting anything from me. <laughs> so I knew he wasn't even talking to me. But revelation, say revelation. Revelation, poof, hit me. And the minute revelation hit me, I was like, okay, wait, what's going on here? Lord, you know I was going to give $20. He said, wrong number. I wrote the check. It was $1,000. The biggest check I had ever given. Pastor Carl, I was so, I can only tell you, when you are obedient to the Lord, there is a joy that will sweep over you that make it no sense. I immediately got in the car at, at, at the end and I called Bishop Merritt. I said, Bishop, I got to tell you something. He said, yes, Marcus. And I said, Bishop, I just gave the biggest check. I'm over at, and I told him the name of the church, and, and I said, I just gave the biggest check I've ever given. He said, really? I said, yeah, $1,000. And listen to what Bishop said. Praise God. I didn't realize that he was probably thinking he finally gets it. It took all those years and I finally got it. 
All I can say to you, Brian, is that the windows of heaven opened up. It didn't stop hardship and things that happened, but it sure changed the way we could handle them. Oftentimes I would say to LaDonna, babe, we're really, this is something that we're dealing with right now, but we could be dealing with the same thing where we were. Thank God. See, Paul says, I have learned to abase and I've learned to abound, but in all things, say all things, I give thanks. Say give thanks. I remember when my grandmother passed away. This is a woman that meant the world to me. My grandma, why did I mention her? Boy, oh boy, I almost started crying. But my grandma had a third grade education and all of her children went on to get master's degrees. And so I admire her so much and I didn't want to go away to college because I kept thinking, I know she's getting older and if I could just stay here and hold her hand, she won't leave. But then you learn it doesn't work that way. Life is life. And that's the beauty of being connected to a body of believers. We get a chance to do life together. Amen? We're actually here building Zion. But if we're going to go to another level beyond where we've been, we've got to what? Shift. I want to describe to you just really brief what we're doing here in the ministry. The forward face of the ministry is our presence here in the community, the brick and mortar part, where we do Sunday morning together, brave events that are amazing events where women come from all over the state, the Royal Rangers event where all the children come here every Wednesday and learn about the things of God. OC students where students of all ages come and they gather and they learn more about God. The brave, oh I mentioned brave, the awaken worship nights for Gen Z that we do where, where young people from all over come here to worship. We have community groups that you'll see when we walk into the lobby. There are almost 60 community groups in all different areas where you get a chance to sign up and do life with other people of like faith. And then we have um, the great thing about the community groups. LaDonna and I actually do a community group for couples on Wednesdays uh, at 630. And what's interesting, God put it on our hearts that we were going to assist couples to achieve what God has called them to achieve so that they can take their rightful position of dominion in whatever industry sector they're in. It's going to be an amazing experience. It's only 10 weeks or so, but incredible. My wife does a community group once a month on Saturdays where women gather. Um, it's the Esther movement where they're coming together to pray over our children, over our nation, over all the things, our government, all that kind of stuff is really incredible. And I really love it because they have breakfast at your group and it's really cool because I like to eat. But then we have community involvement here. We have missions trips, prison ministry. We support other ministries that are doing different types of outreach. And I've got to tell you about one. Is Kathy here? Where's Kathy? Kathy? I don't see her. Yeah? Okay. So uh, Kathy is uh, heading a group that's really amazing. It's a uh, nonprofit called Laundromat Love. Incredible. I had no idea. How many people in here think or you remember when it used to take eight quarters to do a load of laundry at a laundromat? Okay, uh, newsflash. It takes 44 quarters to do one load of clothes now at the laundromat. How many? 44 quarters. I can barely come up with six quarters for air at the gas station, 44, which leads us to something I never heard of before, which is called hygiene poverty sweeping the nation, where people cannot afford to wash clothes. So children, their parents are taking the clothes to the laundromat and they are putting them the dirty clothes in the dryer 
And with a bounce sheet, they're putting in eight quarters to dry the clothes only. And instead of washing them, they're refreshing them. I didn't know that existed. But one of the things that Kathy's ministry does, the women gather together in groups. They go to these laundromats and they spread the love of Christ and they put in the 44 quarters. Give it up for Kathy Stubbs. Revivals always precede warfare. The strongholds that I talked about earlier, those strongholds, Vito, actually keep us from our destiny. Our goal is to get from here to there, but the stronghold will stop us. What are the strongholds? Lack, poverty, discouragement, depression, apathy, lust, addictions, immorality, anger, greed, Gluttony, frustration, impatience, judgment, condemnation, downright meanness, and division. The enemy uses the same strongholds all the time, but revival, Vera, has a way of breaking the stronghold. See, the weapons of our warfare, the Bible says, they are not carnal, but they're mighty, say mighty, to the pulling down of strongholds. What are the weapons of our warfare? Wait, I want to tell you something I didn't get to share with the morning service. This was really good. When, when you follow a good shepherd, a shepherd knows when to call for a revival. And that's why I'm so thankful to be able to sit under the leadership of Pastor Dominic and Amira Russo. Let's give it up for them one more time. Revivals are risky, revivals are raw, but they're real. It's risky because when you turn your microphone over to a person coming to your church for the first time, you don't know what they're going to say. So we can't judge our ministry based on what someone says. If we didn't like what they said, let's, okay. Eat the meat, spit out what? The bones. Revival is raw. We had a chance to see things and experience things that some people never saw or experienced before. Why? Because God, the sovereign one, has to meet us where we are to take us to where we need to go. And at the same time, it does create results. In the middle of the night, God gave me this list of results of what can happen from revival. A reawakening. It can reveal, rebirth, restore, revitalize, reinvigorate, reignite, replenish, refuel, reequip, renew, repurpose, rebrand, rebound, rebuild, reinforce, restore, recharge, restructure, restabilize, reestablish. Remind so that we're in position to reclaim what the enemy has stolen. Shifting gears can take us places that we never imagined. Shifting gears can allow us to live in the fog. Somebody's like, the fog? The favor of God. The favor of God doesn't make you immune from persecution or affliction but the favor of God gives you the strength to endure. The favor of God, there's no way to explain it. You can't calculate it. You can't understand it. And what we're going to do as we close, I have to tell you this. Everything changed for me when I decided to use the weapons. Weapons are prayer, fasting, communion, the word, and giving. Prayer builds intimacy with God. Fasting builds trust in God. Communion builds reverence for God. The word builds strength with God. We're talking about the written word, the read word, and the spoken word. And giving 
Most people think of giving in one dimension. There are three dimensions to giving. They're all important, none to be omitted. The giving of your talent, that gift, your, what you do in the marketplace, the ministry needs your gift. Serving where needed. That has nothing to do with your talent. That's moving chairs, picking up paper, cleaning in the kitchen area, helping with vacuuming, sowing resources whenever possible. That's, the Bible says, where your treasure is, there will be your heart also. So there's a reason. So serving in the house of God does not omit the giving. Giving does not exclude you from service. It, withholding your talent when you see a need is not acceptable. Think about this. For 15 years, our church was on the other side of that door. And we were wondering, how in the world will we ever get to the other side? How will this happen? A man, David Engstrom, decided to give of his talent and took a sledgehammer and knocked the wall down. And here we are. Can we say thank you to David and Mary Ann Engstrom? I'm going to tell you about the seed. This is very important, and I'm going to end with this because this changed our life. Us giving has not exempted us from the service. Us giving has not exempted us from giving of our time. However, it unlocked a door that had been closed that we didn't realize. The Bible says in Corinthians 9, starting with the 8th verse, each, each of you should give what you've decided to give in your heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, because God loves a cheerful giver. This is New Testament. And God is able to bless you, what? Abundantly. So that in, what? All things, at all times, having all that you need, Ryan, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, Jerry, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor, their righteousness endures, how long? Forever. Now, this is, this is so good. Now, he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply what? Increase in your store of seed and will enlarge your harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched, Pastor Carl, in which way? Every way so that you can be generous when? On every occasion. And through your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. I got to tell you something. The word works. I've got to give you some testimonies, and here is what we're going to do after. It changed our life. I can't, I can't give someone else's testimony. I can't preach someone else's message. That's why every time I get the mic, I can only talk about what God did to give us a breakthrough and how God changed our world, changed the trajectory of our family. That's all I can do, Ken. I'm trapped. Am I putting you to sleep? <laughs> all right, I saw, I saw you yawn. I saw you yawn. So now, I want to tell you, Trey, you're right there. Would you stand up, Trey? I'm going to end up, just so you know, I'm going to have to call you up because you're going to help pray us out of this service. So if you don't mind, I would want you to come and just stand here. And I have to tell you about Trey and his beautiful bride, Lindsay. God, say God. God moved on their heart. And he told you to sow a seed. And you didn't have to do that. But you made a decision that you were going to sow this seed. And it was more than $1,000. My first big C was only a thousand. Yours was way more than that. But it was everything that you guys had. And then God, miraculously, within how many days? That day. So, the, so you know we sow in private. Nobody knows what we give. But the very day that him and Lindsay sold the seed, 
God blessed them and someone walked up and asked, do you guys need a home? Are you looking for a home? I have one. It's a little $250,000. Would you like that home? Well, that's a big number to have to pay, right? But they said, no, 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 not for that amount, for what we owe on it, which is in the 50s. Do, can we? But Frank Panalina is looking at me like, Marcus, what's the rest of the story? The rest of the story, Frank, is that they ended up getting the house and then another blessing came to them the same week. More furniture than they could ever use. So the house is full of furniture. And when people thought it might be impossible to just get married and have a baby, for whatever the reason, God spoke over them and you have a new son. Can you give a hand there? But wait. I can't even tell you the rest of the story because, Susan, it would be inappropriate. It would be inappropriate for me to tell you the rest of the story because God is in the midst of doing something so miraculous for them that it's going to blow your mind when you hear it. I'm so thankful that I've created the type of uh, environment that I speak the word of faith to people and they, I get the privilege of them coming and telling me how God answered, how God moved, how miracles happened. Those are the calls I get. Now, there's another person. I'm not going to give all the details. Um, it is Ryan and Pam Santangelo. Would you guys stand up? Because you know I'm going to need you to pray as well. This gentleman, when he started, and you can start walking this way and stand and stay facing the stage. When, when he started, he was in sales. Brian, you got to hear this. He was in sales. And it wasn't anything big and fancy. And then God blew on him. He found favor with God and decided I'm going to become a kingdom financier. I'm going to submit to God. And when God tells me to give, I'm going to give. And so what God said, well, it's easy to work with Ryan because I'm not going to have any problems. If I need to get this from here to there, I'll give it to him and it'll happen. I'm not going to have to fight with him. Then all of a sudden, God miraculously blessed and you and Pam get an opportunity to experience blessings that just don't make sense. Let's give it up. What's interesting, it's not over. Ryan shows up with a company nationwide, just amazing company for an enormous contract. He's competing with all these people from around the country. He opens the presentation with this. We are a Christian organization. Now, in this cancel culture age, they try to shut you down. But when our God has given you dominion and authority, you get the deal. Bigger than most people could even fathom, so I'm not going to knock you out with the numbers. Now, is Kathy Stubbs, where is she? She's not here? Okay. So the next one. There is... So we got Trey. We got Ryan. This gentleman isn't here as well, and I have to share this with you. He had major surgery. He runs a business and ran on... Uh, ran into some difficult times. And he ran into these difficult times because he's just out of surgery. He looks and he's like, our income is low and I don't know how we're going to do this. He's talking to his wife and he says, we need more money. God supernaturally moves on, and this guy is a sower. He said his goal when he started giving was that he would be able to sow $100,000 a year. That sounds lofty. But what's interesting, 
he used his word of authority because he's in relationship with God. God supernaturally answered, and lo and behold, they start sending the deposits, direct deposits to his company. This just happened this past week. I have to pick on Carl and Linda. You guys have to stand up. You got to come on down here. When it looked like God was going to stop their business, when their medical practice ran into a unique quagmire, when it looked like you have to shut down and stop, God supernaturally made a way where there didn't look like there was a way. So God, again, rewarded your faithfulness. And then, LaDonna, you have to stand here for us. We're in the middle of moving our office from one city to another. Haven't had a chance to execute our marketing plan or anything like that. And I said to LaDonna, I said, babe, look at this right here. And I'm showing her these numbers. And I said, this, this is what happened in 2016. It was amazing. I said, this has to happen again. I used the word. This has to happen again. And all of a sudden, the phone just started ringing. People from all over calling, saying, I need your service. What I'm saying to you is that God is forever faithful. He's looking for kingdom financiers. If you don't feel like you've been called in that way, this message may not be for you. It may be for someone else that you know. But if you're willing to just step out, I know for a fact God can blow your mind with his provision. Does it eliminate you from hardship? Does it take away things that will happen that are normal in life? No, but it gives you a team to stand with you, believing in faith, because we've been there, done that, and our God has never failed. If you feel moved, I have the ushers coming down. Because the funny thing about giving, this is different than just, um, just it's, it's different. You have to activate it. That's how it works. I had to do something, Trey. And I don't know what God is saying for you to do. I need the ushers, please. I don't know what God is saying for you to do. If you feel it in your heart, if you feel that God is speaking to you, this is what I want you to do. I want you to take a second, write your seed out or whatever you need to do, and then I need you to come and stand so that we can pray. God is faithful. The Bible says he watches over his word to perform it. I'm so thankful. I can't even explain. Lucius, when I look back at, at, at our life, we were shopping in a thrift store. It wasn't nothing wrong with it. But I was like, my way ain't working. My calculator couldn't keep up. It didn't work. Nothing worked. Why? The Bible actually says, will a man rob God? You've robbed me. And we want to be in covenant with God. I'm just going to encourage those that feel so inclined. Because we're going to pray the prayer of faith. We're not believing, we're not doubting, we're trusting God. And God is faithful. And we're gonna take this moment for you and you can come. Matt is gonna come up and pray with me. I never thought, do you remember the widow only had two mites? It wasn't like she was rolling in the dough. She had two. And from what I know about the word of God, a mite is not a lot. I remember the story about the woman whose husband had died. Because a lot of times the devil will mislead us into believing that just because we have little, we have nothing. Think about what I just said. The devil will mislead us into believing that because we have little, we have nothing. Every time the Bible 
presents an opportunity where you go before the man of God, they ask, what have you got in your house? What have you got? I needed something supernatural. A normal human couldn't do it. We're going to pray. What I need from those that are supporting and believing God I need you to extend your hand toward these people that are here at the altar. For all of those who allowed us to share your testimony, Ryan, just like I told you, I'm believing God for more, even more, that he takes you to a place in business that staggers your imagination, that there is so much overflow that you could have never dreamed this possible. I'm believing with you. Pastor Carl and Linda, God is forever faithful. In healthcare, a director of a hospital, the head of a medical uh, organization, an HMO, a PPO, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond all you're able to ask or think. Trey, you and Lindsay, you haven't seen what God is going to do. Your name will be known around the world. Your sound will be heard around the world because you were faithful and you allowed him to use your life as a testimony of his might. I guarantee you, we will hear the testimonies of the faithfulness of our God. Remember, if you weren't called to be a kingdom financier, it's okay. Because remember, the strategy for overcoming sickness, the strategy for overcoming depression, anxiety, it's the same. Prayer, fasting, communion, it's the same. But for those that have been called, we're now going to believe God. I'm going to start and then you're going to take over. Father God, we just thank you for your word and we thank you for sealing your word this very day. Father, we stand in this great crowd of witnesses as a testament to your goodness, your graciousness, and your faithfulness. Lord, there is none like you. You are Lord of lords and King of kings. Father God, your will will be done on this earth. You will knock down every stronghold. You are the reigning and soon to come king. Father, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise, and we give you our sacrifice. Lord, according to the word that was spoken, we call forth the rain. Father, in the name of Jesus, we call it from the north, we call it from the south, we call it from the east and from the west. In the name of Jesus, may you overtake them with abundance, Father, and allow them to finance the building and the growth of the kingdom of God. Lord, for those that are watching by television, Lord, I command that you compel them to do exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond anything they could have ever thought or imagined according to the faith that they demonstrate. In Jesus' name, Lord, we trust you. We believe you for your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message and you want more coming your way, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or our podcast. We'll notify you of great messages and great content we'd love to send you. Hey, I'd love to meet you in person at what, 9 a.m. service or 11 a.m. service. Have the best week of your life. We'll see you soon.